I am very glad for the opportunity to be here this morning and talk to you about galactin-3 and modified citrospectin and their role in health and disease. And I couldn't ask for a better introduction than what Dr. Klatz talked about, and you will see how relevant. This lecture is especially important because it's an unparalleled and unprecedented place where natural medicine, as simple as the peel of the citrus fruit, meets a field in peer-reviewed science where peer-reviewed papers are published every 36 hours on this topic. So let's start our journey. Galactin-3 is a breakthrough biomarker in health and disease. How many people here have heard about Galactin-3? I can assure you that in 24 months, every cardiologist in this country will know about this molecule, and even possibly earlier. What is Galactin-3? Galactin-3 is a member of the soluble beta-galactoside binding lectins, and it plays an important regulatory role in cancer, inflammation, fibrosis, and immunological response. And it expressed in the nucleus of the cell, in the cytoplasm, in the mitochondria, in the cell surface, and in the circulation. Elevated Galactin-3 is directly involved in the progression of cancer, cardiovascular disease, chronic hepatitis, kidney disease, diabetes, inflammation and fibrosis, all of this equals aging. Galactin-3 is probably one of the most important anti-aging markers. It's not only a marker, it's what causes the issue, and we have a natural solution for this. This is why this is so significant. So just to illustrate how, how, how dramatic this is, is there a pointer here? Mm. Well, anyway, you, you can look at the chart. If you look, this is a, this is a study done on 8,000 people around the age of 50, checking the levels of galactin-3 in the blood. Oh yeah, thank you. So this study was done on 8,000 people, and as you can see, the average level of galactin-3, if I can just find my pointer, is 11.9. Remember this number, the lowest is 7.7, .7 and the highest is 15.6. And look at the difference in diabetes mellitus, 2.3% compared to 6.1. MIs, 1.8 compared to 7.4. Hypertension, 22.2 compared to 47.9, etc. And look at the difference in C-reactive protein, 0.89 compared to 1.98. And this is what elevated galactin-3 in normal screened population does to your overall mortality over 11 years. Take a look. If you are at the lowest two levels over 11 years, the overall mortality is only 5%. If you are at the highest, which is only 15.6, I want to emphasize this number, you have three times the probability of dying in the next 11 years. This study was done on people who are 50 years old. So you can see why this is so exciting and so important. Now, let's talk about galactin-3 in cancer. What does galactin-3 do in cancer? It's involved in cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, in aggregation of cancer cells, in tumor growth, all of this affects the primary tumor, it's involved in the metastatic process, it's involved in angiogenesis that affects both the primary tumor and the metastatic process, and it inhibits apoptosis. All of this published in major journals like JNCI. So this is a basic process of how galactin-3 works. The galactin-3 density increases on the surface of the cancer cell. The cancer cells communicate with each other and penetrate into the blood vessel. They create a new colony in the blood vessel and they call chemotaxis. They call, the blood the, they call new blood vessels to come. And here you have a new colony that through inflammatory process penetrates and you have a metastatic process. And all of this is enhanced by this specific molecule called galactin-3. Let's talk now about modified citrus pectin and cancer. And before I want to tell you my own personal story, I'm a native of Israel, 
The name of my clinic, by the way, is Amitaba, which is the Sanskrit name, and I live in Sebastopol, California. That's it, you know. So, when I was 11 and a half, Israel it was very famous for its citrus industry. And my neighbors in where I grew up, Dr. Leo and Ruth Cohen, were PhDs in organic chemistry and pioneers in the citrus industry. And I remember 1971, early, I was 11 and a half years old. We took a walk in the evening to their house, and Ruth Cohen, out of the blue, turns to me and says, Isaac, one day they will find a treatment for cancer in the peel of the citrus fruit. 24 years later, when the first paper on MCP came out, for some reason I remembered her statement. I picked the phone and told her, Ruth, I don't expect you to remember this, but this is what you told me when I was 11 years old, and now I need your help. And she's the one who put me in touch with the leading pectin scientist, and this is how my journey started into research, researching MCP for cancer, for immunity, for detoxification and chelation of heavy metals, and radioactive material, and you will see how it all evolved over the last almost 20 years. So, MC, regular pectin is a long molecule of polygalacturonic acid that is derived from the peel and pith of the citrus fruit. It's a complex polysaccharide, again, of, 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 of galacturonic acid, and it has a neutral, neutral side chains. I hope I can figure this point here. Technology is always, I can't, well, I can't, oh yeah. These neutral side chains are very important. important. Ramnose, arabinose, we know they are very important monosugars which have an immune enhancing effect. And it's highly esterified. And this is an, in, a substance that does not get absorbed. We need to modify it to, an op, to create an optimal biological activity. And I want to emphasize, modified citrus pectin is a generic term. And for four modified citrus pectin to be the modified citrus pectin, it has to be modified very specifically to average molecular weight between 5 to 10 kilodalton. The degree of esterification has to be reduced to well under 10%. And we have to preserve the side chains, the rhamnogalacturonan 2 and these neutral sugars, and you will see in about 15, 20 minutes why.